Good morning from Flevoland. Our tour is starting off in the little town of Lelystad. Driving here in the Dutch countryside, you will already be mesmerized by all the windmills. Now living in India for five years, I'm really not used to how flat the landscape is. But there is a benefit to that because there is a lot of wind because there's no mountains or hills to hold the wind back. I can imagine you're thinking right now, wait, back up a little. Did she just say she lives in India? Yes, you heard that correctly. I've lived in India for the past five years and I call Bangalore home. This is my first time being back in the Netherlands in three years and hence I made this series from India to Netherlands to showcase my home country for the people who have been asking me for a while what's the Netherlands really like because that's your home country. If you're curious about the previous episodes I've linked them all down in the description below but for now let's get back to the Tulip Festival. Can you believe this road is actually built on reclaimed sea bottom? I'll tell you the story in a minute but by now I'm just mesmerized by the windmills. This is my best friend Dean, and on her side you can already see the numerous tulips. Look at that. The Flevoland Tulip Festival is really not famous with tourists so this video is an insider gem on how you can see the tulips in a very peaceful place and stay off the beaten track. Throughout this video I really want to take you through the tulip route for which I think you will have to plan for next year because by the time this video is out it's just a very brief period of time that the tulips are out so I don't think you'll be in time to make it for the tulip season this year but you can definitely plan for it because it is mesmerizing. I'm so excited. Are you excited Nadine? I'm super excited. <laughs> You're also dressed like a tulip. I love that. Madam Tulip. <laughs> Lelystad is the capital of the Dutch province Flevoland, which is the youngest province in the Netherlands. Composed of two connecting islands in the middle of the Netherlands, Flevoland only came to be in 1986. And fun fact, it is the largest non-natural island in the world. Flevoland is a province almost in the middle of the Netherlands. It has a very interesting story because actually Flevoland used to be underwater. So where we are driving right now is sea bottom. <laughs> Can you believe that? Initially, the Dutch claimed a lake from the Zuiderzee or the Southern Sea, but in the end, they actually laid it dry and then created this whole province of Flevoland entirely below sea level. On 1st of January 1986, Flevoland officially became the newest and 12th province of the Netherlands. And there are windmills everywhere. Like, it's nothing. There is something very, very special here that is organized every single year between March and the beginning of May. It is the Tulip Festival. When most tourists think of seeing the tulips in the Netherlands, they usually head out to the Keukenhof or Lisse, more in the south of the Netherlands. It's truly an experience I would recommend to anyone coming to the Netherlands and I've made a separate video about it. However, having grown up in Flevoland, we're looking for a little bit more of an exclusive experience. One very important note if you want to see the tulip fields in the Netherlands is that they're extremely seasonal. A few days before I went with Nadine, we celebrated my dad's 70th birthday by doing the Flevoland Tulip Festival. However, we did not have the full experience. We started this tulip route a little bit disheartened because we couldn't see many tulips along the road. There was supposedly an app launched which would take you around the fields with the tulips, but even the municipal government of Flevoland had to postpone the launch of the app because the tulips were a little bit late this year. There was simply too much rain and not enough sun for them to come out on time. But as you can see behind me, we found a patch! Around 1593, the tulip first appeared in the Netherlands. At first, they were just grown in the Hortus Botanicus in Leiden, and only visitors were allowed to set eyes on the pretty flowers. But soon, tulips spread all over the country, causing tulip mania. This is actually considered an official era in Dutch history. Did you know that Flevoland is one of the Netherlands' largest open tulip fields? Pretty cool for reclaimed sea bottom land, right? Visiting the tulip festival is completely free if you drive around in your own car or maybe you want to do it the Dutch way and hire a cycle. The main reason why I would recommend it to any tourist is because here is the only place where you will get a true private experience of the tulip fields, whereas in the Keukenhof or in Lisse it's a lot more crowded. I mean, how dreamy is this? This scene could be straight from a Bollywood movie. It 
is really the beginning of the tulip season so if you want to go i think the end of april is a much much safer bet but we did find a pet so we are happy and it's a good start of our tulip root tour did you know that tulips didn't originate in the netherlands they were imported from the ottoman empire or present-day turkey starting in the 16th century in the 1500s carolus clusius a botanist at the university of leiden in the netherlands received some tulip bulbs from the ambassador to the sultan i'll continue this story in a second but first i need to update you on the timing of the tulips this is a few days later after i went with my parents and it is so much better so much more flowers have come out definitely 10 10 recommend to wait a little bit later into the season because otherwise if you're a little bit early most of the flower fields may not have come out and now it's like oceans and seas of tulips it's incredible love it nadine what is your first impression i really like it also yeah. <laughs> the official tulip festival has three designated routes, but me and Nadine are actually just driving to this place called Krell. To be honest, once the tulips are out, it doesn't really matter in which direction you'll go, you will encounter the tulip fields everywhere and it makes for a really special drive. Something that I was personally not aware of what was really special when I was growing up here is the Dutch countryside. When you think about how Flevoland was created and what the farmers have managed to produce out of that reclaimed sea land, it is truly commendable to see their efforts and see how much they have boosted the Dutch economy. Also, I don't mind the local wildlife. Here's a small but very important request though if you plan on entering the actual tulip fields. I don't just randomly <laughs> enter other people's properties and neither should you please 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 specifically ask for permission at the farmer's home if you want to enter the fields because you cannot just randomly walk on other people's property and obviously if more people come here it might damage the flowers so that's a hard no-no we always ask permission now back to our tulip origin story clusius grew the plants in his private collection but he would not share his bulbs or sell them as a result the gardens were repeatedly raided and the bulbs sold the netherlands tulip industry was born also i think it's important to note that you really need to have a car to do this you cannot do this by foot maybe you can do it on a two-wheeler but i think if you are in the netherlands for the first time a car would be more safe definitely if you want to do this you need to rent a car or you need to hire a driver with a car through your hotel or accommodation nadine also just mentioned that there are tour buses but if you're going with a group just know that you won't get the fields to yourself like we just had as the popularity of the tulips in the Netherlands grew, the bulbs' value increased. They were considered a rarity and commanded an enormous price that only the wealthy could afford. There was a rush on tulip bulbs from 1634 to 1637 as speculators bought them hoping to sell at a higher price. Many did during tulip mania or the tulip craze, but in 1637 too many speculators sold at once and the tulip market crashed, ending this brief but memorable period. Today the Netherlands is the largest producer of tulips worldwide exporting about 3 billion bulbs per year. Generally, tulips symbolize love, but there is a different meaning based on the color of tulip in question. For love and romance, red tulips are the way to go. Getting back to the meaning of the colors in a second, but I just want to highlight that the main activity here is just clicking pictures and shooting videos because the aesthetics of the tulip fields are just too beautiful. want to convey an apology, white tulips are the flowers that you seek. Purple tulips are associated with royalty, while yellow tulips are great for cheer and happiness. I'm very curious now, what would be your favorite tulip color? Let me know down in the comments below. For me, I just love these multicolored fields because the contrast of the colors is just really mesmerizing. If you would really force me to just pick one color, I would go for the purple ones because they're Nadine's favorite color and also I think the purple ones have something very mysterious is very exclusive and very rich about them. Whichever color is your favorite, I can guarantee you that these fields or oceans of tulips will really leave you in awe. Let's see how Nadine feels about this experience. Well, I'm enjoying myself, I'm enjoying the flowers, I'm enjoying Ifana, the last moments with Ifana, the last days. Within <gasps> a few days she will leave. No, me again. no. Like, 
Oh gosh. So I, I, I'm enjoying our company right now. Yay. Honestly, enjoying yours. <laughs> and Nadine is such a wonderful photographer, videographer, everything. Like, I'm so happy. Pro tip, by the way, do wear some waterproof shoes. Because the polder land in Flevoland is actually sea bottom, it can get really, really muddy when it rains. And obviously, this being the Netherlands, it rains a lot. Luckily, it's spring now and the temperatures have gone up, but you can clearly see that even if it rains a little bit, the paths will definitely be muddy. The paths towards the flowers and also between the flowers might be really wet as in like actual like water puddles wet. Another fun fact about the tulip fields is that the tulips are not the actual business for the farmers. The tulip cutting is a nice side hustle for the farmers but the true big business is below the surface. The growth and sales of the tulip bulbs under the ground are actually the biggest revenue model for the farmers. But for us as regular tourists, I guess the flowers will do. I may be very casual about the mud, but Nadine was really not amused. Here I am prancing and dancing throughout the mud because I actually grew up in a farm. So for me, it's not a big thing. But yeah, let's just hear Nadine's review and what she has to say about it. Nadine, what is your review? <laughs> Why are you asking me this question? Say what don't, you were saying off camera. Don't ask me. Tell me. No. <laughs> Speak freely, child. Okay, my review. Okay, the tulips were beautiful, but you have to go on a day when there's no rain. My shoes are so dirty right now. The tulips are very beautiful, so the tulips, I will give it 10, 10 out of 10. But the fields... <laughs> One. There you go. Yeah. I obviously enjoyed it. I'm just gonna clean my boots, but it is a very, very important note. I think right now you should also watch the other episodes of my From India to Netherlands series. It's the first time that I'm back in the Netherlands in three years. So I documented everything and the other episodes are about Amsterdam and surprising my friends and visiting other places in the Netherlands. So enjoy watching that now.